Hello and welcome back. In today's video, let's have a look together how we can remove a tattoo and replace it with another one. I will share some tips you might find interesting. So let's start first by grouping the layers we are not going to use, so they are out of our way. Here is our original image. First thing I will do is to duplicate and hide it, so we have a copy of the original. Now, there are a couple of routes we can take to remove something. You can apply changes on separate layers, but for this video I'm going to directly work on the image. First I always start with the inpainting tool. Usually this generates a good starting point. So let's select the inpainting brush and brush over the tattoo on the arm. As you might notice, Affinity showed us an info panel stating the layer was converted to a pixel layer. This is because the inpainting brush only works on pixel layers, which makes sense as we are going to change the pixels on a layer. When using the inpainting brush, it is best that you try to get as much of the area you want to remove in one brush stroke. The moment I release my mouse, the inpainting will start. And I have to say, it did a pretty good job. There are some areas, like on the left and the right, which need some more attention. To fix those, usually the healing brush works best for me. But you can also use other tools like the patch tool. Before I can use the healing brush, I need to select an area from which the healing brush will gather information. With the option key pressed, we can click on an area for sampling. Now I can paint over the faulty areas and the healing brush kind of averages the area with the sampling area. Because it makes an average, it is not very useful for areas with sharp edges. Like the area here, the border of the arm. For these cases, using a clone brush tool makes much more sense. The clone brush, as the name already states, clones an exact copy of the selected area. The cool part of the clone brush is that you can also specify a rotation angle, so the cloned area will be rotated and then applied. This is very useful for areas which are not horizontal or vertical, just like the area I'm working right now. Now, let me also work on fixing the right part of the arm, which is a bit more challenging as it contains a variation of highlights and shadows of the muscles. Sometimes the healing brush is just not good enough to get the desired effect. In this case, I want to cast more shadows. The plain old regular brush can help. I will just sample a color from the shadows and paint the shadow on a new pixel layer. It's always a good idea to use a low flow brush and a very soft brush. When you paint an area, the effect will be too strong most of the time. So we can use the opacity of the layer to dim it down. But also the blend range can help to make it more realistic. In this case, as I'm trying to add more shadows, I can use the blend range to make sure the painted area does not affect the brighter areas that much. So let me continue to work on the right part of the arm. Another way to paint with shadows is by adding a curves layer and then darken the image. If I now invert this curves adjustment, it will not be applied anywhere, but with a white brush, preferably with a low flow, I can paint in the shadows. When painting shadows, imagine the structure of the underground and keep in mind where the light is coming from. By painting back the shadows, you create the depth the arm needs, so the muscles come alive. The same we can do with the highlights, a curves layer to brighten the image up and just like the previous curves layer, invert it and paint the highlights by using a white brush on this curves layer. Awesome! Let's have a look at the before. If I turn it on and off, there are some mismatches which gets my attention. 
So if we made changes directly on the original image, here's a quick tip for you. Duplicate the original and make sure it's on top of the applied changes. I will now add an inverted mask to it by keeping the option key pressed when clicking on the mask icon in the layers panel. Now, with a white brush, I can get back the usable areas from the original. This helps me to fix the areas on the right, but also on the border area with the shirt on the left. Something still feels not okay with the right part of this arm. The highlight and the vertical shadows don't make sense. So let me try to fix that by using the healing brush tool to add and remove shadows. I'm looking how the shapes of the muscles should be and then apply the shadow and the highlights to match it. So at the end it needs to look like a healthy strong arm. Awesome! I think this is pretty amazing. We did the most difficult part of the video, the removal of the tattoo. Time to add a different tattoo. Let me paste an image from the clipboard I copied earlier. Well, that looks awful. Let's quickly fix that by changing its blend mode to multiply. Gorgeous. That looks much better. Now time to match the orientation. I can do that by rotating a bit. And finally, let's finish up with a more realistic blend. And blend ranges to the rescue again. I will dim the image down by lowering the shadows and moving the midpoint of the blend range somewhere close to the shadows, until it looks realistic. Let's compare with the original. Pretty amazing. Optionally, we can distort the pasted tattoo by applying a liquify filter. Sadly, my affinity has an issue with filters and blend ranges. So I'm going to apply the liquify filter on top and group them together. This way, the liquify will only apply to the tattoo image. Nice. Now the idea of the liquify is the molded tattoo to follow the depth of the muscles. In this example, the liquify is not really necessary, but still can make a difference to make it look more realistic. Awesome! And there, my friends, we are done. I hope you liked this video and learned something new along the way. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching and until the next video. Keep safe and keep being creative.